Alright, hello everyone, welcome to another Roblox Studio tutorial. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a transparent part that like materializes out of thin air and it'll like sort of like float up. And I will do this using tweens. So now um, I already have a script in my floating part here. So this one is called detector part and this one is called float part. And basically what happens is um, I'm going to get the player to spawn here and the player if they jump or like walk onto this this part it will trigger this this floating part to like materialize so that they can go on to the next part so I'm going to show you how to do that so I have my float script here that is inside the transparent part here and I'm going to define the float part as script.parent so this is the floating part and I also have my detector part which is workspace.detector part and of course uh, you might have different names for these. You don't have to use this setup. You can like pretty much do anything you want. And this this is very versatile. You can I can think of a lot of ways you can use this. So now that I have my two variables. I'm also going to define two like settings variables. So I'm going to put a settings here. So the first one is the tween time, and this is how long it takes for the for like the the part to materialize. If you set this to a larger time, it will take longer. And if you set this to a smaller one, then it will take it will be faster. So um, a good one is like the one, just one second. One second might be a little slow, but like it's like um, it's it's a sort of like gentle float up. It's not that fast. It's not too slow, but it's like a steady pace. And I'm also gonna make another variable called y offset. And I'm going to set that to 3, because that's what I used in my testing. So basically, this is how far below the transparent platform will be when it floats up. So if you set this uh, lower, then like the the part that you have the script in will like go will start uh, lower. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to demonstrate that to you later, because you probably don't understand what I mean right now. So... Uh, let's move on to the logic. So basically, when you touch the detector part, we are going to connect that to a function, and in here we are going to uh, we are going to uh, do some stuff like make the part float. And I'm actually going to make another debounce variable to prevent the the tweens from like conflicting and stuff. So we're going to set debounce equals to false the first line to make sure that um, we are not. Um, actually, we're going to set the first. Uh, you're gonna check to make sure that the debounce is true, to make sure that you're not like touching it again. So we're gonna set it immediately to false to make sure we don't trigger it again. We don't want it to happen again, or else it'll glitch. So after you do that, you're gonna want to uh, you're gonna want to make a variable called current pause, and you can call this whatever you want. And just like to do these names. So. This will be like the current position of the part, okay? The the goal where we want it to like be at the very end. So um, we uh, you want to put your part at the place where it should finish, because then like uh, I can in the script it will like it'll do all the the tweening and animations and stuff, and it'll always end up at the location that you specified in Studio. So in this case, we're gonna set this to the float parts position. This will be our target position for now. And uh, we're also going to be um, doing, uh, so now we're going to be uh, putting this part like lower down when it starts the animation. So to do that, I'm going to set the uh, float parts position. And we're going to set that to the float, to the current position minus, uh, minus uh, the y offset. And this is where the variable comes in, all right? So the y offset variable. Um, when you touch the detector part, it'll make the part like go down a few studs. So like it can, it has the appearance when it rises up uh, that um, that it floats up so to the to the spot. So I'm gonna do that. And now uh, I'm going to make a variable for the goal of the tween. So this is gonna be our first goal because I'm actually gonna be doing two. Um, two tweens so the first tween will actually make it go a little higher and then the second tween it will just like like gently like fall into place that's what I want to do with uh, my tweens for this one so the first goal I'm just gonna make an empty table 
and we're going to make the position equal to the um, current pos plus vector three dot new and uh, 0, 0 0.50 so the first goal it will go 0 0.5 studs higher than the actual target position so that it can like gently fall into place after the first tween um, which I'm going to do a second tween after and we're going to also make it so that the transparency is zero so that at the very end the part is completely opaque so after that you can uh, make your first tween object and uh, I forgot to add my tween service so we're going to make a tween service variable I'm going to get the game service which is tween service down here alright so we're going to make a new tween service create and uh, Whoops, I almost forgot you need a tween info. So the tween info just specifies like the uh, the time and the style of the tween. So what I found that works nice is um, first of all you want you're gonna want to put your tween time in here because that's how long it takes for the tween to do. And the easing style, um, uh, you can basically choose whatever you want here. Um, something related to quad or quint or court. So. Yeah, don't do anything like bounce or elastic because it'll look weird. So um, you're going to want to set this to like, um, in my testing, I think like uh, court looks the best. So I'm going to set that over to the easing style and uh, I'm going to set that to court. And basically in the first tween constructor, um, the first argument is the part that you're going to want to tween, which is float part. The second is the tween info, and the third one is the goals, which is first goal. And basically now I'm just going to play the animation. So basically this will do the first animation of it rising up. And uh, when this finishes, we are going to connect that to another function. Whoops. And well, we have to do this because uh, when you play a tween as asynchronous, it does not wait for the, uh, the tween to finish. So you have to wait until the tween is finished. So after you do that, I'm going to make a second tween. Um, but before that, I'm going to do like a second goal variable. And I'm going to set that just to position is equal to current pos. So this will make, the, now this is the tween that will make it like actually go into the, it will go into its spot because this will set it to the target position which is current pause so um, yeah after you make that you're gonna want to make your second tween and that is gonna be your tween service we're gonna create with our float part our tween info you guys you can keep the tween info the same between the two unless you really have a reason to change it because I I find that like using the same tween tween info works fine um, and uh, you're gonna put your in your second goal and then you're just gonna play that and that's basically it so let's try out our code before I do anything let me add a spawn here okay so let's see if um, the detector part works so whoops I forgot to anchor uh, make sure your parts are anchored, all of them, all right, including the float part and your detector part, so that the the positions will stay the same, so that I can move. So look at that; it just appeared. Um, let me show you that again. All right. Once I step on this detector part, look closely at this part. Yep. And you see how the the part just sort of like materializes out of thin air, and it rises up and like falls into place. So that's exactly what I'm getting at here. And uh, basically, you can just put the script any in any part that you want. And um, if you want to like do this for a model, I'm sure you can do it with uh, the primary part or something. But I haven't experimented with that yet. Um, but like this is what I have done for uh, now. So um, you can. Uh, uh, copy this code and you can like make it better or something you can do whatever you want with it so um, this is just a little example on how to do it so uh, thanks for watching this tutorial everyone and I'll see you in the next video bye guys